9th of March, 12 noon. Michael Bourne had talked about it on the radio program, made a big deal of it. Anyway, so that was the showdown time. When you said, honey, please promise me if the woman from downstairs should come up the stairs now, don't do anything crazy. And I said, no, honey, don't worry. Well, anyway, I said, don't worry about that. I said, well, if she, then at first I thought that if she comes up running up the stairs in a, in a hostile manner and she's coming at me, yes, I said, then I defend myself. And I said, yeah, I might kill her. But no, I knew that that wasn't going to happen. I didn't, I wasn't sure though. So what I did is I used that sword and I, 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 I held, you know, I stuck it in the, in the chair and uh, I tried to like hold all the evil down in, in the world with that motion, right? And oh, I knew that electricity had to do with it, and magnetism, so anyway, I said like, stay connected with me. <laughs> I, yeah, put my foot against your foot. And anyway, I spoke to God directly. So that, that's 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 the only power that can help now. And uh, yes, we were, we were. I had just gotten us a sandwich, and you were too sick to eat it. I think you were slumped over the table. So I said, "Oh, and I had a drink in my head, and the sand, my half of the sandwich." I was too upset to eat. So, and I, at the same time, was holding the sandwich and the drink and the sword up down onto the chair. And, 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 and like, yelled out, like, it's like, we, I said, we need this, you know, food and drink. We need this. We need to live, you know, this is, we, we need this. And then I said, this thing about the waters of, of life from, from the book. And, oh, and I said, uh, yeah, I called out to God directly and said, like, I'm, I'm here now, and he, and he is with me, like, you're with me, you know, like, I was, like, it was the next scene from the Garden of Eve, like, you know, like, I'm, I'm a woman on earth now, and this is my guy who's with me, please let us live, you know, like, we haven't done anything wrong or anything so wrong that we deserve to be killed just for being here in this world, so please help us. And, uh, oh, of course you said, you know, you're going crazy, honey, don't do this, and anyway, so I said, yeah, my ignorance, <laughs> be quiet, I please. thought the world was the way it used to be. They told it used it to be. TV, the way it, it was. used to be, or you yeah. thought I mean, you thought it was. Still, but yeah. then the rumbling stopped, and this wind was coming through from the other direction. I had felt a wind coming in from the north direction sometime earlier, years ago, from in that room, shortly after I had moved in. Then the wind came from the other direction, and yeah, it felt like you know the Holy Spirit was filling the room. It was wonderful, and the rumbling stopped, and the feeling of pressure stopped, and it was kind of like, well, you knew it wasn't over, but for the moment there was a respite. There was peace. Also, before, the, the humidity was oppressive and hot, and uh, the weather changed. The air became clear. There was a wind. It was not humid anymore. The sun came out. But later that night, the bad people were reconvening and churning and beating the drum. Now, since I had been in the center of attention so much earlier that day, and it actually changed things, 
I thought, naturally, that I was the center of attention that night as well. You know, like who are you to turn things around and get in the way of our agenda? And there were also people running downstairs, coming, running up the stairs and running back down the stairs, slamming doors, being very violent, very mean, very rough, very, you know, just slamming the doors, running, uh, turmoil all over. And anyway, um, I was perfectly quiet in my room, and uh, I communicated with the crowd in my mind, and I was doing some signing, some sign language, for example, and the guy downstairs said, down, like loud, I pointed up, and anyway, every time, every time, Crowd, there were two times when the crowd almost went wild. One was a little bit after midnight, maybe around one. The other time was somewhere between two and three. And, but it didn't ignite. Like the rah, rah, rah would go on for like a few minutes. And then it would subside, it would calm down, and I, I was reasoning with them, you know, talking to them in my mind, you know, going like, you know, come on, look at this, you know, we're just regular people, and um, what have we done that would make us deserving of this type of punishment, really think about it. There's nothing, I just listen. It, whatever, no matter how much the people that were driving this were trying to get the crowd angrier, it didn't work. It, it, it didn't ignite to like a crazy, uh, you know, warlike anger. It subsided. It fizzled out because there was really no argument to justify it, and everyone understood that. But it was very, very scary to me at the time. So there was one time, and the second time that they tried again, and again it subsided. But it, for the rest of the night, I was very, very upset. Very, very tense and very unsure. I mean, I, I was still in shock over what had happened, and also communicated in my mind with the woman downstairs. I figured if she really is what she claims to be, then she can hear me and she can communicate with me. However, uh, she, she didn't answer back. But anyway, so this lady. Uh, in Wisconsin, she says she's an invalid. She doesn't get out much, and she has uh, she had tattoos appear on her stomach, one on each side, yes. that lasted for one day each. Yeah. And each was a picture with a was a rectangle with a background showing a multitude of rather silly faces. In the foreground, the left rectangle was the large number seven, and in the foreground of the right rectangle was printed the word faces. Um, in addition to faces, I have three-dimensional structures, mostly of people or strange animals. Um, well, whether flat or 3D, my blood, scabs, tissue, or skin is effective. You usually have at least Seven one that shines faces. brilliantly, and at a higher resolution you can see it moving. Crazy, though, eh? Mm, wait. There's all kinds of videos like that. Um, <coughs> this one guy. Have I wait? This one guy was saying that he he was seeing um, um, Hebrew writing in the, the 
doing a lot of this micro dot stuff, this, this quantum dot writing. It, I, I don't know exactly how it's done, but it's the difference between something and something. And See, it leaves a little dot, a little I, quantum, okay. but the one what? An yes. electron sized dot. Mm -hmm. and okay. Seven faces, uh, seven personalities. Okay, I don't know, but what she's saying here at the end of her essay doesn't mean yeah, yeah, I didn't quite make get much either. sense. Anyway, um, all right. Uh, okay, when, when, when I have emotions of love and compassion and sadness, and I cry, my eyes turn green. That time, what was dominating me was fear. Okay, when you woke up, remember I, I, I was so upset, and I, the entire night I had emoted and I thought I was trying to still turn around and pending disaster. And really, it, it did. If you weren't conscious, had you been fully conscious, you would have felt the same thing. And I knew you, you were sick, so it's, I was trying, at the same time, I was, I was trying to comfort you and get you for the night. When you woke up, you had experienced the same thing, but you weren't fully conscious. So, you, wow. Is that me? No, 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 this is really good. I see something of myself in her. She's also someone very introspective and very.
parents sent back to the agency. You know? Remember? And anyway, no, I don't uh, remember, but, but yeah. yes, and, and vaguely. Anyway, the, like uh, vaguely, I, I was vaguely. afraid, and I needed comforting, so I asked you to give me a hug. And let me show you how you gave me a hug. Yeah, you showed me. It was scary. Oh, terribly like, stiff. Like this. That's what you said. It didn't feel that way to me. It was though. Yeah. It, it you have to realize we had been both drunk. Yes, I know. But then, Terrible. yes, we had, um, then, and I felt I had to dis dissuade the crowd from coming up there and storming into the room, you know, because, I mean, the, the entire day was very, very frightening, and anyway, so, but I felt that God was with us, but the night, night is, is their domain, or so they say, you think, um, it is not, but uh, anyway, at night thinks uh, uh, it's an extra magical dimension, but, but, you know, love can prevail at night too, and anyway, I, I thought I had to fight them off with all my might, it was a very stressful night for me. And anyway, you said that I was getting very upset and I was trying to explain to you what was happening. But, and and you, you thought that, uh, yes, you said, honey, look at you. you you're sweating yeah, you profusely. And, and I wasn't. So I said, here, put your hand on my hand and feel it. It's not wet. It's almost completely dry. You know? And uh, I was sweating a, a little tiny bit. And you thought that I was sweating profusely. So I said, put your hand and feel. Look. And you said uh, my eyes had changed then also. They looked gray, and uh, I was in a state of fear. Right, so my eyes to color changed to gray. When I feel fear, it changed to green, bright green. When I feel love, you are. By your photonics, yours turned to a bright, bright, bright blue, a uh, greenish blue. That was the color of your eyes. Beautiful color. It's like well the ocean. So yours were taking on a green tinge as well. as we are. <laughs> 
work, so let's not get ourselves worked up here. Target individual, certain coincidences take place, unexplained illnesses and deaths, uncertain dates, birth dates are key factors. Everyone finds multiple synchronicities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, multiple synchronicities. Their being is not a coincidence. Yes, the lawyer with the same birthday as my father, your father with the same birthday as mine. Pressurize your head, for example. Can you imagine any reasons why one's head would have pressure in it? Um, Besides the obvious, like being in an aircraft going up and down. Yes. Or pressurization. Uh, uh, being the target of a micro weapon will do it. No, you mean like rapidly heating the contents of your skull? Yeah. You know, the mucus in your head? Rapidly yes. heating it to well, expansion or while cooling? For, for a while, you take it. <laughs> oh, also Perhaps because of the uh, causing a histamine reaction by attacking one. All this, yes, all 
it externally. Yes, histamine reaction could be caused as well. Yes. And perhaps these little wiggling things inside of you, they get turned on by this. And then it's at a certain even more. frequency bandwidth, yeah. and they're told activate, deactivate. Activate, deactivate. And replicate. And, uh, Stop replicating. Yeah, yeah. Do example. your chosen cure or not do it. And then, you know, if you if you have the room in the pentagram, then you have every particle that in the room that hasn't been cleaned away, uh, you know, hovering around and zipping around. And uh, you know, you can then create a very uncomfortable sensation.
doctors at, at Kia, those are the ones who actually will help their patients and that will include prescribing medication that's effective. They are the actual the, the, the doctors that really actually care. My grandfather was a doctor who really actually cared. He's dead now. Perhaps he's killed him. They were never that all that good. Yeah, but he was so good. He was also a fantasy, you know, a guy this good has to be unreal, you know. And he was from a different planet. <laughs> I just I picked the best one. The strong independent woman. Yes, who thought her for herself and proved the
and uh, I don't know uh, somehow yeah, why didn't I just leave somehow they didn't let me leave so I figured hey uh, you know uh, let me try and, and somehow cheer these people up because I don't know what's going on here what they got planned for me and uh, There was nothing I could do to cheer, to move them one bit. They were as miserable as they were always going to be. And then they turned angry and hateful and violent, too. And I, I ran out of there. They were planning something terrible, something horrible. Then I was running out of there, and with me, was, there was a large exodus of people trying to get out of Manhattan over the Brooklyn Bridge, or the Manhattan Bridge, the one off Canal Street, which one is that, Brooklyn Bridge, I think, the Manhattan Bridge, this is Manhattan Bridge, and uh, there were so many people trying to get out of Manhattan, there was a big bus, there was a bus uh, turning uh, and, uh, nearly nearly toppled over. There was actually an accident. Are we talking about real life or a dream? Dream. Still the same dream. The exodus from Manhattan. Which happened. We did I dreamt that while we were still living in the hotel before the, this this stuff started, as it was in the planning stage. When they were sitting together somewhere and decided to uh, put us to, to uh, put us through this hardcore thing. Yes. At that time, I dreamt about it. So, my mind is very perceptive. And I'm listening to what it has to tell me. Every time. <coughs>